This video is about structs, S-T-R-U-C-T-S, structs. It's kind of hard to say clearly. Anyway, a struct in C++ is going to be a way, uh, another. so it's another structured data type, like an, like an array, but it's different in some ways, okay? So if we think about where we could use this, when we were doing the parallel arrays example in the last video, we were keeping track of student IDs and student course grades, okay? So we had two separate arrays, one of integers, one of doubles, and we just had to take great pains to make sure that they were added in sync, accessed in sync, deleted, changed, all in sync. So we were responsible, our program was responsible, responsible for keeping that correspondence between the parallel arrays, okay? So that gets kind of ugly uh, in some ways, okay? And we can't do a two-dimensional array in that case because we have ints and doubles. And arrays in C++ have to all be the same type, okay? So if we were to think of a real-life application using students, then it's it's clear that you would, in addition to a student ID and a course grade, you could have, you know, their name, you could have um, their major, who their advisor is, where they live, all kinds of information. And that would get increasingly messy if you were trying to, um, to do all of that through a series of parallel arrays, okay? So C++, the developers of C++, have created this, this new data structure called a struct, okay? And what a struct allows us to do is to create, in essence, a record for an entity, okay? So we create this template that we're going to use to create these records, where we're going to say how many ints, how many doubles, how many strings, whatever we have, okay? And then we're going to be able to create instances of that struct or variables of that type, okay, that, um, that we can use in our programs. It's easier to keep track of, okay? So again, a struct is a custom data type, just like arrays can be used where data types are, okay? Structs are the same way. And in some ways, we're, we're going to find that structs behave more like normal things than, than arrays did, okay? So as far as that goes, um, then when we want to declare our struct, and where do we declare them at, okay? We have to declare them outside of any function, okay, typically. That's not entirely true. You you could do it inside the int main, okay? But in general, that's not a good idea because you're going to want uh, to have the ability to, to deal with them everywhere. You know, I may argue with myself on that one. We'll, we'll think about that question uh, for the next video. But for now, we're going to go ahead and, and, and declare this outside of the int main, okay? So let me get to where I can type here. So let's talk about this idea of a struct then. So the general idea with the struct, you're going to have the keyword struct, okay? You're going to have whatever the name is. We'll do an example here in a minute, but we'll just start with some, something generic, okay? And then we're going to enclose these things in brackets because they're going to be multiple lines we have to keep track of, okay? But this is not a normal structure where you've seen like a for loop, okay? This is not that kind of a structure, okay? So we have to put a semicolon at the end, which I find a little weird, but it does make sense. This is in essence one line as far as the program's concerned, where in a for loop or a while loop or even an if statement, the, the angle brackets or the curly brackets denote uh, a multi-line structure, okay? And this is only one line, okay? So we then are going to go and list one by one, whatever the type is, like an int, um, whatever we call these member data, okay? So we could call this, you know, M1, okay? We could then have a double, you know, M2, wh whatever we have, okay? So you can define these how, however you like, okay? And then again, that ending semicolon is important. Okay, so let's look at an actual example of how this works, okay? So this is from the book. They're gonna create, 
let's say you're doing some kind of a um, real estate program, you need to keep tr track of houses. So we have a house type. Okay. That's going to be the name of our struct that we'll use. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to have the following member data. Let's get rid of these. It's going to start with a string for the style of the house. Is it a ranch? Is it a bungalow? Is it a cottage, a Victorian, whatever? Okay. And we have some ints. Int for the num of bedrooms. Okay. Another int for the num of bathrooms. Things people want to know. Okay. Have an int for the num of cars garage which is an awkward way to say it, but is it a one car to garage, two car garage, a zero car garage, okay? We have another int on the year built. And then we have a double for the price, a double, whatever the tax typically is for that house. Okay, that declares uh, our, our struct, okay? And again, I put it in the universal location, so it's global, but it could also be inside of the int main, okay? So inside of int main, if we want to declare um, a variable of this type, we do it pretty much like we would for anything else, right? Um, we're, we're going to say um, house type, space, new house, okay? That's all we have to do. That's going to declare a variable and it's going to be of type new house. Okay. So um, that, that's all pretty basic. Um, and we can then go about adding in the information that we want. Okay. So it's important at this point to realize that a struct or that the individual member of a struct is just like um whatever type it is okay and can be used in any kind of way that you want to do that okay so for example the the style so let's talk about how we access it first and it's by name okay so if i say new house that's my variable dot style okay new house dot style we're first up to this first item here okay so this is a string I can do with it whatever I can do with the string. I can send this to a function. I can print it out. I can change its value. I can set it here directly. Okay, I can just say that right there as a direct entry. Okay. Um, you can also do a CN on these. <clears throat> so let's say for the number, number of bedrooms. Okay, I can do a C out. Number of bedrooms, question mark, and then do a CN directly, the new house dot num of bedrooms. Okay, so all that's possible. Okay, so it's just like anything else. So again, treat, treat the member of a struct just as the underlying data type. Okay, so kind of like with arrays, the, the element of array, if it's an array of integers, the element of the array is just an integer and can be used anywhere it can be used. Okay, so uh, as far as a function parameter, if you have a function that takes um, an int, then you can send the number of the new house dot number of bedrooms to that. It'll be perfectly okay. Okay, again, we can see out any of this stuff. Okay can say like house style. New house dot um, of bedrooms. Okay. Oh, okay. Make sure I haven't caused any random errors. And I have. Um, oh, I started the wrong place. 
you notice it gave me an error because I had not included the IS stream or the namespace standard before that. That was the issue there. And now we're okay. So number of bedrooms, we're going to say three. Then, um, oh, I put the wrong thing there. Interesting. That's a typo on my part. Um, the house style should be style. But we know that part works. Entering it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now it's working. Okay. So, I mean, that's that's kind of the basics of how it's going to work. Okay. So, um, we'll talk next video and some definite differences between this and arrays. But the first thing that comes up is that you don't access it by number, so you can't loop through it in the same way. Okay. So, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing, and this was true with arrays as well, I can't just see out new house. Okay, if I try to do that, it's going to give me all kinds of error messages. Okay. So we, we, we're going to have to go through item by item which is which is something kind of new for us okay um but they're very powerful they can be used uh, in a bunch of ways okay um and, and what we'll get to next time is that we can put we can create an array of, of our new structs okay so just like you wouldn't want to keep track of students separately and that's why we went to arrays in the first place we can have an array of a student struct that will hold structures for all the students that we need. Okay. So we're going to be able to do things like that. Okay. So I think um, something else to think about. Okay. A couple more items here. And the first item is that if you need to make a copy of your struct, of, of your instance of your struct. Okay. So again, let's make sure we're clear on this house type in this case is the template to create instances of house type, okay? So house type is abstract, we can't do anything with it, but new house we can do something with, okay? And to show how copy works, and it's real straightforward, and, and we could not do this with arrays. Uh, I could have new house, old house, whatever we have, okay? And note that I've got a couple of things here. I've only got the number of bedrooms and the style set, okay? But I can just say old house equals new house. Okay. And that works and it's fine. Okay. Um, it used to be in C, you could say that with arrays. You could just say, you know, array B is equal to A. Okay. Uh, you can't say that anymore. And that's because there's a problem called aliasing, which we'll talk about more. Uh, later in this class and certainly in, in data structures, okay? But we don't have that problem with the structs because an array could be gigantic in memory, okay? So you don't really want to make another copy of it willy-nilly. So that's why we can't do that. You can go through in, um, with an array and do a loop and set every element of the new loop equal to the old loop. You can do that. But it's more work so we don't do it too randomly, okay? Um, but a struct is smaller. So when we make this copy here, old house will contain all of the information that new house has, but all of it can be changed independently. And that's where the alias becomes a problem, okay? Uh, so I don't want to dwell on that too much now, but but that certainly is is something that we can do. Okay, so now that we have this, if I were to print out the old house number of bedrooms, it would print out whatever we'd entered before. Okay. If I print or print out the old house dot house style, again, it's going to be equal to whatever the Cape Cod that we entered before. Okay. But they can be changed independently. Okay. So that's not, not an issue. Okay. So that could be useful in some situations. Then the last thing that I wanted to talk about with this 
for this section um, or this video is the idea of using structs with functions, okay? And there's a little bit different issue here. And again, for the same reasons we just talked about. Remember, if we have a function that takes an array, then that function, um, it will pass the array by reference. And that's you know, all we can do. We don't have to put the ampersand. It just does it automatically. Okay. Again, that's because of the potential memory size of the array. Okay. But with a, a struct, structs are going to be smaller typically. Okay. So we can pass those to a function either by reference or by value, either one. And by value is the default. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so in our example here, let's think that we need two of these. Um, let's just go ahead and, and hard code a couple of these just so we have some data. So let's say we're just going to have the style. We're going to have the bedrooms hard coded. Go ahead of uh, bathrooms hard coded, and let's say we're going to have price hard coded. Okay. So let's say, and we're just going to leave the others blank. Um, let's say that we want to create a function that is going to take an instance of the house style, okay? And it's gonna print it out, print out all the values, at least all the ones that we have, okay? So the house type itself is, is in global, but new house is not. New house has the same scope of any other variable, okay? So I'm gonna have to pass this to a function, okay? So let's think about the function prototype first, okay? It's a print function, so it'll be void. Let's call this print house. Okay, what's it going to take? It's going to take just what we would do uh, if if the function took an integer, we type an int. So we're going to type in house, house type. Okay, that's all it's going to take. And without the ampersand, this is going to take it by value, which means any changes made in the function are not reflected back in the main. Okay. So we don't need a, a, a constant like we would if it's not going to change, okay? So now to go down and look at our function down here, we have to give it a name. Let's call it H. It's fine. And then we can say C out H dot style. C out h dot um uh, bedrooms c out h dot um uh, bathrooms finally c out h dot price and I'm not formatting any of that it's pretty ugly but you get the idea Okay, that's it. So then up here, I should be able to say print house house. Okay, let's try this. That worked. So when we run it, we see that it's going to print out the information that we want. Okay. So again, if I were to make a change here, so just to show that. Down here, if I were to say h dot price is equal to three 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 dot three three, okay. And I were to print the house again, get a line character in between there. This should not change the price of the house. It should go back to what it was before. And you see that it did. Okay. 
So no differences there. But if instead I do pass it by reference, I put the ampersand there, and I put the ampersand here, That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Now when I run it, you see that it has had a side effect. Okay? So that's more like normal. Okay? So that's going to get us started. That's about halfway through the chapter. Okay? So we're going to use structs to collect data that are dissimilar. It's things we may be able to do in, in a multi-dimensional array, uh, but instead we're gonna create these records with the structs, okay? And we just do it by creating the struct. And I have thought about it more. The struct definition needs to be in the universal area, in the global area, okay? That the, where we, um, we have to pass it to functions because we're defining our variable of type of the new struct that we're creating inside of int main. So that's why we have to send it to the function, okay? So we can put as many of these as we like. Any combination of valid data types are fine, okay? Mm -hmm. That includes custom data types that you've created. Uh, you could have arrays there. You could have all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, and, and that's perfectly okay, okay? Um, once we have this, we refer to them not by number like with an array, but by name. Okay, so we've created the new house house type. We can then get to the style, number of bedrooms, all of the all of the things that, that we've done up here, all of those things are the type that they're defined to be. Okay. We can send the whole thing to a function, and that's that's perfectly okay. Um it, we can pass by value, which is by the default, which means no changes are made. We can pass by reference with the ampersand, just like with simple variables, not like with arrays. Okay, we can also, unlike with an array, we can return a struct from a function. That can be the return type. Okay, so I could create a function uh, if I wanted. It would be like a house type, something like uh, get data, whatever you want to call it. Okay, you could do that, and it could return that house type as well. Okay, and then again. You know, each of these is is just so new house that number of bedrooms just an integer i can use a cn i can hard code it directly i can use a c out mm -hmm. i can use it in calculations i can send it to a function where an ant is called i can do anything i can do with an ant okay so that's that's the basic idea behind structs okay so um in the next video we'll talk about some more complicated things okay so we'll talk about uh, the differences more specifically between arrays and structs. We'll talk about how we can use an array in a struct. So a struct can contain arrays, which would make sense. Okay. And we can also create an array of structs, which I'd mentioned before. Okay. Uh, it's also possible to use a struct as a member data of another struct. Okay. So that's possible as well. Okay. So all of those will be in the next video. Um, as always, if you have questions, make sure you let me know.